Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, this is going to be part two to the Tinkercad workflow. So in the Tinkercad workflow, I showed you guys how you can design a part that's um, actually bigger than your print bed. And what I'll do is I'll have uh, ti um, time lapses of prints running up here in the corner to kind of show you as I kind of talk through a little bit of this. But now as you can see that I have these... Um, uh, pieces here so I printed out the the various pieces and obviously they go together sort of like a puzzle piece I'm trying to get around the microphone and everything else now because of this 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 is a rather tight fit so I just can't pop them in here well not so much I might be able to get this one but it's a very very tight fit there we go um, and, and I've had to clean it up a little bit and you notice it's got a couple little gaps now one of the things one of the kind of tips I'll go back and share I made a little bit of a mistake in the Tinkercad workflow I did because I used a new beta version. And one of the things about the beta version is it allows you to have the number of facets around here, uh, around a circle, and it uses a rather low number of, of facets to um, speed up rendering. And then you, there's a slider off to the side, and um, I, what you do is uh, slide it to increase the number of sides. I didn't do that. I left it at the default sides. So it's rather hexagonally, if you will. So it's, it, had, it has a lot of sides. So I had to shape this off and shape this, which left for a little bit more gap, which, which isn't an issue, but I think you can kind of see in this piece the, uh, the, the generalized gap here. Uh, would probably be a little bit less so if I would have turned that up. So just kind of a little tip. It's not a major deal for this because of what I'm going to do is uh, epoxy the back. And so that'll fill in those holes and become airtight because this is going to slide in the back of the laser. So um, when I finish uh, assembling this, now I want to show you a couple more pieces. So actually, so I've, I've uh, tapped this piece in, and actually these are very tight fit. What I did is off camera is I sat this piece in and took a ball peen hammer and just tapped it in here. So these are actually very, very tight. So what I'm going to do is place some um, epoxy across the back, and what I'll do is I'll put a thimp there. Oh, be before I get there, one of the things I did want to show is uh, the, the attempts. So here are my sort of lost attempts and if you follow me on in inst instagram which the link is below you would have seen these so uh, again i tried printing this in abs and i just hate freaking abs so i originally wanted to do this in abs because then what i could do is use acetone to join these parts together um, instead of epoxy but again i ended up doing this in pla because you know um i actually tried so you know a couple times and this is what i got now i did use a brim and then what I actually tried doing, again, if you follow me on in Instagram, is I even tried taping this down with um, uh, uh, blue painter's tape back around the bed. I did this actually on the reflash Da Vinci. And the Da Vinci works great reflashed, but this um, the, the, the PLA, the adhesion of the PLA just really does not stick and I, and I tried glue I tried you know 3d EZ and, and everything else now this is a big you know big surface I tried to keep the fill down to keep warping down but as you can see this just totally came out a mess now uh, the one piece here is I did get a little corner lifting um, on, on some of the corners with the PLA not too bad uh, if I would have really thought about it, uh, I would have probably turned up the bed temperature a little bit. I had the bed temp at 60 degrees. I probably would have, for this big, went up to maybe 80, and it would have improved it a little bit. But, um, again, for this part, you know, no no big harm. And, again, the nice part about it is look at the size of the part. I can print a rather large functional part, and it really doesn't look that horrible and because of the the scaling you know or, or not really scaling but um how i brought these together it actually looks pretty good i mean almost sort of like it was designed that way it was designed that way but you know you kind of i think get what uh, i'm getting at functionally now what i'm going to do is again epoxy this together and then now what i've done is i made this the size of and actually it's going to go this way um an inch and a half opening PVC opening. So this is how it's going to go on the back of my laser printer. Then what will happen is this will slide down 
into the laser printer like that. And I'll show some pictures of this actually installed. Then what will happen is the hose will go on here for my uh, vac system. And again, you'll see a video. You saw the unboxing of it um, in, in a little bit earlier uh, where I bought the one horsepower uh, blower. And so what will happen is this will duct into that blower. Uh, or right now it ducks into my dust collection system. So, but anyways, and the whole idea of this is, um, is once this is together, I can switch sides depending if I want to move it around, if I need the vent to come out this side or that side with the T, it's coming. Now I could probably do and just flip it this way or this way, uh, with, with an angle and maybe I'll do that. It just sort of depends. Um, I kind of thought this was rather interesting going, going this route. Uh, anyways, um, let's go take a look at it on the machine. And okay, sorry for the hand holding, but uh, that's the only way I can get you guys in here. So, as you can see, I've got it installed back here on the laser, and I've now got it plumbed into the general extraction system for the shop. And what I have is I've used these one and a half inch valves as, as uh, gates, blast gates. So I can turn this particular one on and off. I've got them for all my machines, so I can turn this on and off and again I've got uh, a high velocity shop vac that does the drawing now and then like I say I'm going to add for the lasers the one horsepower uh, blower motor uh, in there in line to do the extraction and you can kind of see it sitting over there on the bench so that's going to come online here pretty soon I just have to finish up the uh, the couplers on it and you'll see a video on that but this actually came out pretty good I'll put the files up on Thingiverse if you want to print them out yourselves um, so hopefully this was helpful, it showed you kind of a complete cycle of designing a large scale part, printing it out, putting it together, and uh, so hey, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe, more of this stuff coming. Again, look forward to the um, uh, new laser fume extraction system pretty soon, and subscribe. See you next video. Cheers. Like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.